Well, depending on when you're actually watching this, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Ian Middleton. I'm a travel and landscape photographer, and this is one of my video guides to a great photo location. And today we're going to look at the fabulous location of St. Thomas Church in Slovenia. It lies in the north of Slovenia, and as you can see by some of the photos here, it's a fantastic landscape photo opportunity. It's a well-known viewpoint, especially among photographers, and it's best photographed in the morning. The reasons why you'll find out in a minute. Um, it's not easy to find, uh, so you will need directions. And after this video, you can visit the, my blog where there's a page on this and you'll find a map with exact coordinates for the location you need to go to. As you can see from this viewpoint, the church sits on a prominent hill with the Kamni Kaups as a backdrop. Now it's a morning shot. Uh, the reason for that is, as you can see, there's a tree to the left of it and at sunset that tree would cast a big shadow over the church itself. Now unfortunately, like a lot of churches, it's not lit at night. But still, if you come here at the right time of year, you can get some good dawn shots like this one in winter. Now the next lot of photos I'm going to show you from the same shoot. This was done on a December morning, late December morning actually, a few days before Christmas. And it's a nice frosty morning as you can see. Now winter time is a great time to photograph this place because the sun is right far south and it rises right off to the side and the light pours through the valley and hits the church first as you're going to see in a minute. And there you go. Uh, as the sun breaks over the horizon, the first place it hits is the church itself. And it also lights the top of the hills, as you can see there, and the mountains and everything. So it's a fabulous, fabulous moment. What's great this time of year, of course, is that the church and the hill start to get lit. But the hills behind the church are in the shadow, which makes the church and the hills stand out in the composition, of course. So you've got a variety of compositions. You can go in zooming right close, like I've done here with a 400mm lens. Or you can pull back in like you're going to see in some of the other shots. And if you're lucky, well, you often are quite lucky in this location, you're going to get some mist drifting in through the valley and over and around the church itself. Here you can see now, as the sun is rising higher, the light is starting to spread down the hill itself. This is my personal favorite. I love the way the mist drifted in and spread either side of the church itself. Even though the church itself is a fantastic view, if you look off to the left a bit, it's also just as good. So here I just move my camera around slightly to the left. That mountain peak there is called Storjic and it's a really interesting view. So try that too if you go there. Again, as you can see here, as the sun is rising higher, the light is spreading further around the hill but only light in the top of the hill. I took this one a month or so later, uh, after a period of heavy snow. Some of it had already started to melt by this time. Now, uh, on this particular morning, the mountains were not visible. They were behind a thick uh, veil of mist and cloud. So on this particular day, I just zoomed in close and captured the light falling on the hill around the church itself. Summer, on the other hand, is a whole different story. While uh, later, early in the year, the sun is further south and rises off to the side, in the summer, it rises uh, over the mountain peaks as it moves north. Now, as you can see by the picture on the top right hand side, the very bright part shows you where the sun is just about to rise over the mountains here. And this is the sun rising over the mountains, believe it or not. This was the same morning as the previous photo, a morning in early June, and I was eagerly awaiting the sun 
to rise over the mountain peak but just as it happened and you wouldn't believe it right at that precise moment a thick bank of fog blew in and completely obscured the scene so i had to quickly adapt zoom in a bit and capture a photo like this instead the mist cleared very quickly but by that time the sun was already up and the scene was far too bright for any wider shots so in that case the best thing to do was to zoom in close on the church and focus on the mist drifting past as you can see here so one july morning i returned and what an incredible morning it was after a night of rain there was some beautiful fog drifting through the valley some beautiful cloud patterns in the sky the sun rising behind the mountain has silhouetted them nicely and the fog drifting behind the church has made the silhouette of the church stand out nicely so it was a perfect morning this was the first shot of the morning right at dawn while most of the photos you've seen were taken with a longer focal length this particular photo was taken with a shorter focal length there's some interesting foreground area around the viewpoint where we stand and occasionally it's good to pull back and take some of that in if the conditions are right here it was right because there was a lot of fog in the valley and it silhouetted the trees nicely and it also silhouetted that little hunter's hut down on the bottom left and as sunrise approached the fun started to begin Now it's easy to get carried away when this starts to happen and just focus on one composition and just fire away. I prefer not to do that myself. I prefer to try various compositions, constantly working, moving in and out, sometimes going close, sometimes coming out far, sometimes including one mountain or two, and sometimes even very quickly moving off to the left away from my main composition, like this one. Here I pulled back a bit to include the church in this time positioning it on the right uh, with Storjic and the rest of the Kamni Kalps on a wider view. Here I came in close to make use of the intense red colour that was forming right over the mountain peaks here and also that colour was being reflected in the fog that was drifting through the valley. So. In that particular point it seemed like a good idea to come in close and really frame that up tight mountains are great but we don't always have to include them and uh, one of the advantages of shooting with a long telephoto lens is the ability to zoom right in close and compress the scene which is what i have decided to do for this particular shot i decided to focus in close on the church and the hill and of course the color of the fog so this made a much more slight let's say a more interesting a different kind of photo the magic moment the sun broke the top of the mountains now unlike the previous time a thick bank of fog didn't drift in and completely obscure my scene but the fog did get a bit too thick around the church and the hill itself as you can see so although we can still see it it's a nice photo and the church appears there it's still a little bit too much fog around there for my liking so i guess i'll have to return and try again once the sun is over the mountains then it becomes very bright and it can be quite tricky to photograph at this stage you get problems with lens flare now one little t um, trick i learned and it's quite a useful trick is to get a big piece of card or a book or something that you can use to shade the lens from the sun itself and in this way it helps to prevent the lens flare well we've seen lots of uh, very colorful photos but it can also look good in black and white and this particular day uh, i went there actually just on a scouting trip when i first uh, got the details of this location and it was raining there was lots of cloud but i managed to get a nice black and white shot again here one morning in summer when the sun rose behind the mountains the sun was already up high the light was quite intense so i tried this time to go for a black and white shot 
and this is the same photo you saw earlier in colour. I also processed it in black and white, which I think looks good too. If you're not one for early mornings, then you don't always have to go there right at sunrise, but you do have to go in the morning, because as I said earlier, um, the tree will cast a shadow over the church if you go there afternoon or late evening. So you can go there later morning, depending on the time of year and the conditions. If it's clear, like it was here, there's still some snow on the mountains and it can still look good. One morning in October, I got there quite late, um, but it was a nice morning. It was around 10 o'clock, I think. Uh, it was an autumn morning. There was The sun was quite low in the sky because it was further south. And there was lots of cloud scattering the light and shadow across the landscape. So it lit it nicely. It lit the top of the hill, the church, cast a shadow on the bottom of the hill, cast a shadow behind the church, so it makes the church stand out. And everything was perfect. And I said it before and I say it again, always look around you. And I turn much further to the left here and use the 400mm lens to zoom right in on the distance, especially because it was clear enough. And this is a photo of the caravan caps, which are on the border between Slovenia and Austria. And this is Mount Stoll, the highest in the range. You can actually see this from Bled the other side. So it's always good to look around, as I keep saying. And here's a panorama of the whole scene that you can see uh, from the viewpoint. Fabulous, isn't it? This is a panorama made from five photos, all stitched together and it shows you absolutely everything. So it's a great viewpoint. Go check it out. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, you can find directions to this photography location on my photography blog. Just head out to blog.ianmiddletonphotography.com, head to the category called Great Photo Locations, and you'll find the St. Thomas Church article there. Uh, you'll find all of these photos plus more plus information and at the very end there's a Google map with the exact coordinates for where you need to go. So check it out. If you prefer not to go on your own and would like some guidance, I run photography workshops in Slovenia and you can join me on one of my private workshops and uh, request to be taken to St. Thomas Church. Uh, or join one of my weekend workshops which will ordinarily take in St. Thomas Church if possible.